Good day to our dearest professor and of course our classmates. I am Patricia Vemi Malangis and the group 2 will present the Philippines in the 19th century as results context. So as we all know, the late 18th and 19th century marks the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, wherein people were able to create new technologies, machineries, and of course, the Philippine economy began to improve as well. So specifically, the group 2 will discuss the economic development during the 19th century, wherein we will also tackle the end of galleon trade, opening of the Suez Canal, opening of the ports of the world, rise of the exports, crop economy, and of course, monopoly. Here are the presenters of group 2. We have Dave Alvarado, Paulo Alejandro, Ron Cerudo, we also have Lance Corrales, Mark Cartaniegas, Monica Hamon. We also have Patricia Malangis, Prince de Burcio, John Lloyd Tolentino. I'm Prince Emerson de Burcio, and I am your first reporter. I'm going to report about the Galean trade. So what is Galean trade? Galean trade is approximately 500 years ago an Augustinian friar discovered a sea current making it possible to travel across the Pacific Ocean from west to east in a single commercial route for the first time in history. That's how the Manila Acapulco Galeon trade came to be. The term Manila Galeon was used to refer to the trade route between Manila and Acapulco, though the Philippines was already trading with other Asian and other neighboring countries. Even before the arrival of the country's fine Spaniard colonizers, the Spanish government continued the trading relation and made the Manila the center of commerce in the East. Spanish sailing vessel was, was made annual trips across the Pacific between Manila and Acapulco during the period of 1565 to 1815. Two, two galleons were used for the trade. One which sailed from Acapulco to Manila, which took about 120 days at sea, and the other from Manila to Acapulco, spending 90 days at sea. This became a, a mean of communication between countries and served as an economic lifeline for the Spaniards in the Philippines. Uh, thank you. That's all for my report. And to know more, and to know when did this happen, let me call my friend Dave to help you with all with it. So now let us talk about when and how the Manila Galleon trade started. So when did it start? Um, the, the Spanish inaugurated the Manila Galleon trade route in 1565 after the Augustinian friar and navigator Andres de Ordaneta pioneered the turn of viaje or return route from the Philippines to Mexico. Ordaneta and Alonso de Arellano made the first successful round trips that year. So with the record of more than 250 years, the galleon trade was the longest running shipping line of its time, carrying silver, gold, spices, silk, and other objects that were fashionable between 1565 to 1815. So not only the Philippines had, so not only the Philippines were the were their target, but also some parts of Europe and other parts of Asia like China and India. So how did it start? The Manila Galleon trade became a pivotal business for the Spanish colonizer that they came to depend on the annual vessel that the colony would sometimes come to an economic depression if a ship went down or was captured by pirates. And this also became a means of communication between countries and served as an economic lifeline for the Spaniards who lived in the, on the Philippines. And King Philip, of, King Philip II of Spain invited Urdaneta to be a part of the expedition team to the Philippines as he was fam very familiar with the Southeast Asia and its culture. So that is it. Thank you for listening. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lance Owen Corrales. And my name is Ronaldo Cerudo. We are reporting opening of Sus Canal. 
what is the definition of sukana? Suskanal is an Suskanal is an artificial sea level waterways waterways in Egypt that connects the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. The idea of linking Mediterranean Sea with the Red Sea by the canal dates back to 40th century, as it was pointed out through history starting by the Aros era, passing by the Islamic era until it was degraded, reaching its current condition today. The Paros degraded a canal link in between River Nil and the Red Sea. It is considered to, the, to be the first artificial canal to the use in travel and trade. What is the significance of Sus Canal? Sus Canal is a significant route for energy, commodities, consumer goods, and componentry from Asia and the Middle East to Europe. The canal's location also makes it a key regional hub for shipping oil and other hydrocarbons. And it enables the transfer of an estimated 7 to 10% of the world's oil and 8% of liquid field natural gas. Approximately 1 million barrels of oil, oil covers daily in 2019, 53.5 million tons of ores and metals and 35.4 million tons of coal travel the length of the canal. And these are the timeline of Sus Canal. In 1799, se project began by Charles D. Leperry. In 1833, Saints Simon Simonians arrived in Cario and they become very interested in the Sus project. In 1935, Saints Manians were devastated by a plague epidemic. In, in, in 1846, in Paris, Saints Sinemanians created an association to study the possibility of the Sus Canal once again. In 1847, Bord Bordalou confirmed that there was no real difference in the level between the Mediterranean and the Red Seas. In 1854, Ferdinand de Lesse secured an agreement with the Ottoman governor of Egypt to build a canal 100 miles across the isthmus of Sus. In 1856, La Compagne Universal Du Canal Maritime de Sus was formed and granted the right to operate the canal for 99 years after completion of the work. The construction began April 25, 1859. In 1869, November 17, the Sus Canal was opened to navigation. In 1876, Major improvements began and the canal soon grew in the one of the world's most heavily traveled shipping lanes. Good day, I am Paul S. Alejandro and I'm going to report the advantages of Suez Canal. So since it was completed in 1869, the Suez Canal has been one of the world's most important bodies of water. It is considered to be the shortest link between the East and West due to, due to its unique uh, geographical location. It is an important navigation uh, canal linking between Mediterranean Sea at Port Said and Red Sea at Suez. The importance of the canal stems first and foremost from its uh, location. 
it's the only place that directly connects the waters of Europe with the Arabian Sea, the Indian Sea, and the countries of the Asia Pacific. Without the Suez, shipments traveling between those parts of the world uh, would have to traverse the entire continent of Africa. So adding hefty cost and also substantially extending the time of their journey. So the Suez Canal also played a major part for the Filipinos. The canal enabled the Philippines to have direct commercial relations with Spain instead of the uh, through Mexico via the Galleon trade. It made the sea travel easier from Asia to Europe and paved the way for liberal ideas and education to enter the Philippines as brought by the Ilustrados who studied in the universities of Spain. Good day, my name is Monica B. Hammond and I'll be reporting the opening of the port of the world trade. So the opening of the port to world trade means that the goods from the Philippines could be shipped out to any of the countries abroad and goods from other country could enter the Philippines directly. Before, Spanish banned the other foreigners from living in the provinces or having businesses in the Philippines. The history of opening of port to world trade. So, it all started when Royal Company of the Philippines, or in Spanish, the Real Compañía de Filipinas, Governor General Felix Berenguer de Merquina, recommended that the King of Spain open Manila to world commerce. Furthermore, the bankruptcy of the Real Compañía de Filipinas catapulted the Spanish King to open Manila to world trade. So, on September 6, 1834, the Philippines opened to world trade. By a royal decree, Su Majestad or Your Majesty the King declared the Royal Company of the Philippines abolished and opened Manila's ports to world trade. Because Manila was a great harbor, the shape of the bay protected trade boats from rough waters. It became one of the best cities to trade with during American, British, and other European and Asian merchants to its shores. As a result, Spain's economic supremacy lost its footing in the region. People involved in opening the port to world trade. King Charles III of Spain was the one who created the company and his goal was to make trade to Spain from the Philippines more efficient. Governor General Felix Berenguer de Marquina recommended that the King of Spain open Manila to world commerce. Su Majestad or Your Majesty the King declared the Royal Company of the Philippines abolished and opened Manila's ports to world trade. Governor General Basco had opened the Philippines to this trade. Tomas de Comín is a Spanish writer. In his book, published in Madrid 1820, mentioned an unnamed English merchant who left the Philippines in 1798 after living in Manila for 20 years during which he became rich. And the last one, George Hubbell, 1821, an American businessman and his younger brother Henry arrived in Manila engaged in business and he founded the Hubbell Company. Impacts of opening the port to world trade to Filipinos during 19th century. When the world trades opened to the Philippines, it has caused for the Spaniards to sell more products to other countries. Since the materials came from the Philippines, they use our resources and do not repay us as they sell more things we grow to have less resources. The economy of the Philippines rose rapidly and its local industries developed to satisfy the rising demands of an industrializing Europe. Impacts of opening the port to world trade to Filipinos during the 20th century Manila and the Philippines garnered great economic growth around this time. Many shops opened in the Binondo and the rest of the Extramuros area. So the best part of this was that some were also owned by Filipino businessmen who were knowledgeable in finance and consumer retail. So Manila itself expanded and more people came to settle in the city and grew rich through profit from trade. 
So by 19th and 20th century, the opening of the port and the other parts of the Philippines to foreign trade brought not only economic prosperity to the country but also remarkable transformation in the life of the Filipinos. So as the people prospered, their standard of living improved. Rise of export crop, economy, and monopolies Years after the end of the galleon trade, between 1820 and 1870, the Philippines was well on its way to developing an export crop economy. In the late 19th century, the Philippines' main export commodities were tobacco, abaca, and sugar. And because the Philippines is open to global trade, and has an abundance of these products, it has consistently become a major exporter of these products and has gained popularity in other parts of the world. The Spanish opened a new ports to foreign trade, such as in Iloilo in Panay, Zamboanga in western Mindanao, and Cebu in Legazpi in Bicol. It became their passageway for exporting their crops, into various locations, the opening of Suez Canal in 1869 had contributed to a dramatic increase in trade volume. Also Manila was open to foreign merchants by the middle of 1830s and because of the increased importance of global shipping, Philippine abaca was considered as the best materials for ropes and cordage. And in 1850, alternated with sugar as the island's most important exports. And next we have monopoly. Monopoly is derived from the Greek word monos, meaning one, and poly means to sell. It is a market structure which characterized by a single seller, selling unique products in the market. The seller faces no competition as he or she the sole seller of goods with no close substitute. So meaning a monopoly is defined as a single seller who sells distinct products in the market without competition. And the reasons why monopolies are created is to limit or to prevent competitions. It could also fix the prices for its products. Customers would have no alternative source and to force skilled labor to work for whatever wages they are willing to accept. Imports and ex exports during 19th century The decades from 1820 to 1870 were crucial in the economic history of the world and produced significant changes in the economy of the country. An increase in trade and navigation in Asia accompanied the, op the opening of the Suez Canal, which like sugar, fibers, coffee, etc., become the main export commodities. The Spanish government granted shipping sub subsidies as a result of all this. In the Philippines, there was saltatory rise in the level of foreign trade. Manila was known as most all colonial ports worldwide during the Spanish era. Manila was given the names Manila Cigar, Manila Hemp, and Manila Paper due to the tobacco from Ilocos and the abaca from Bicol. The introduction of agricultural technology in crop advances made by the foreign merchant encouraged the development of new agricultural areas which in turn increase exports sugar, abaca, tobacco, and coffee. Export increase in concentration as they were shipped to the United Kingdom, China, British, East Indies, United States, and Spain. The economic situation in the Philippines throughout the 19th century gave rise to haciendas, also, also referred to as the cash crop economy. Massive areas of land were planted with cash crops during this time, including sugar, tobacco, abaca, and coffee.
Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig at naway nakapalutan ninyo ng aral ang aming presentation.